Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make these rotational match cut transition. Now, this is straight from my What We Seek cinematic video, and I had someone ask about how I actually made this effect. It's really simple to do, so in this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you. So now, also, I just apologize if there's any sound. There's like construction going on literally just outside my door here. So it's like it's coming right through the window. So I've tried to cut the mic down as much as possible, but it may still be in the background there. The first shot you're going to need is just really like your two actors standing in one location like I've got here on screen. And as you're rotating the camera around, your actors are going to do an action of some sort. So in this case, I just had my two actors basically just hugging as I was wrapping the camera around. Now, whatever you do, it doesn't matter, but you want to make a note or a mental note about how you filmed it because that's really important because when you go to the next location, so for this shot, you need to, to basically match that same movement and same positioning of your actors. So if your actors were hugging like mine were, you need to basically have them roughly positioned in the same way and doing the same sort of action. And you need to be moving the camera in that same way. So if you were wrapping the camera around them while they were standing there, then you need to be roughly the same position away and you need to be moving the camera roughly at the same speed as well as having the rough same framing. So it helps if you film it in one location that then you basically just have that clip and you can refer to it later. And once I've got one, all I need to do is just basically take my first clip here, create a new composition, find that point here in the timeline. So right as I wanna start my transition, so somewhere around here, I can start that transition. Once I've kind of got it roughly here in the middle, I'm just gonna drag my second shot straight here on top and I just want to basically drag in at the start here and find that point that it matches that movement. And you'll notice that it's not perfect and that's okay. What we can do is if I hit T, I can also just basically scale down the opacity of that second clip. That'll help just to kind of re-time that effect. But we're just trying to get it as close as we can. And what you can do then to fine tune it is you can just basically scale in here and then kind of reposition it. I can also rotate this second shot here slightly and then again, just reposition it here to try and make it work. Then I can just turn that opacity back up and you can basically see as I just play through that, we've already got that match cut working. Now there's a few other things we can do to make this work a little bit better. Now, if you like learning these different video effects and you like a lot of the effects that I used in my cinematic video, then you can also check out Travel Effects Pro, which is my video effects course, which will teach you step-by-step step how I made most of the major transitions and effects in my video, along with behind the scenes on how I actually filmed the video, how I planned it, and then how I also edited the whole video together, as well as the color grading. But before we move on, a quick word from today's sponsor. Envato Elements is a one-stop, unlimited download creative asset library that you can use for putting together any digital product. Now it's something I've personally been using now for quite a while and I use it pretty much on a daily basis just to fill in all of those creative assets. Now you might ask why would I be using this sort of service myself? The simple reason for that is saving time. Having access to all of these creative assets in one place just means it's going to save me a heap of time compared to me making them all from scratch. So I find it extremely useful when I'm putting together a video and I just need something to go over the top. And that might be like titles, it could be transitions, it could be overlays, it could be stock video that I tend to use a lot just to add as filler in my videos. All of these assets would take me a long time to create individually, but for one low monthly fee, I can download unlimited amounts of these assets and use them in my creative projects. The other great thing I love about their service is that they have all of these other assets that you can use. And the best part is you can now download all of this stuff for free on the seven day free trial. Now that is only available in certain countries, even after the seven day free trial, or if you're just interested in signing up to the service, then you can use my special link down in the description below. And that's gonna give you 50% off an annual subscription. Check it out for yourself and give it a go. So now we've got these two clips. Some other things you could try if yours aren't matching too well together is you could just add a very slight fade transition. So I could just create a very slight fade transition here and just kind of have it 
fade between those two clips. Something else you can also do is generally I found that the, a lot of these takes didn't match because of the speed. So what you can do is you can basically just right click, come over to time and then enable time remapping. And you wanna take, if I create a keyframe here at the start, you basically wanna drag in on this keyframe here to speed up that second clip or drag it out to slow that clip. But generally I think the things that I found that we're not getting it to match is just the timing of where the camera was placed where the, you know, given where their action was playing out. So trying to match that perspective, that's why it's really important just to practice this shot a few times because even if you think you've got it, you're not gonna end up with that exact shot where it's gonna work perfectly seamlessly. Now here I've just added a very quick color grade. This was not the final color grade that I used in the video, but it just kind of makes it all come together. I think trying to match the colors between the two shots. For the first one, I ended up just slightly adding a bit more of a warmer tone just to help match to that second clip. And it's really just about trying to match the two clips together as far as contrast. But it's really just about taking these simple principles and then building on them and expanding out. So it was a quick video this week. Hopefully got something out of this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you love this video, then you might wanna consider subscribing. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.